cartoon pop art on a famous person tutorial. So you want to make sure you have your directions in front of you. The first thing you want to do is search out a very good quality image of a famous person using the Google Image Advanced Search. Um, your image should not be smaller than 1024 by 768 pixels. Okay, and you also want to make sure you find a JPEG image. After you open up your image, <clears throat> you're going to um, duplicate your layer. And you're going to have a background copy. It says background copy. Now you're going to go up to image adjustments, invert. And then you're going to come over here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and you want a radius of 7. And then from here you're going to click on this little box and you're going to change the blending mode to color dodge. Another way to do it is to double click in the blue, come up here to blend mode and change that to color dodge. Now you're going to come down here to create new fill, um, add a new adjustment layer, create new fill or adjustment layer. You're going to click on that and you're going to choose threshold. You're going to adjust the threshold to about 240 until you have what looks kind of like an outline drawing of your person. Okay, about there going to close this. Now I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to click on the layer and call it skin. I don't want you to use the, the paint bucket tool here. I want you to come up here and use the paint brush tool and you're going to choose a skin tone that you like. and you are going to make sure your opacity is set to 100. You're going to carefully go in and paint in your skin tone. However, you do need to change this to multiply because if you don't, let me show you what happens. If it's set to normal, you can't see what you're painting below. So you want to change that to multiply. I'm going to get in a little bit closer and I'm not going to worry about the eyes right now. I will add a layer mask later on and just get rid of of my skin tone on my eyes. So I'm just going to quickly fill this in. takes a little bit of time. Alrighty. Make sure it's nice and even. You want to make sure your opacity is set to 100% so you get a nice even skin tone. And I'm going to add a layer mask to that and I'm going to remove the white I'm going to remove the skin tone on the eyes. And also on the lips, but it's kind of hard to see that right now. So I'm actually going to turn off these two layers here so that I can go in and follow the curve of her lips. 
By turning off these two layers and keeping only the skin layer turned on and the background layer, it lets me see exactly where I need to remove the skin tone from her lips. Because later on I'm going to pick some nice colors to paint in her lip color. Oh, turn those layers back on again. Alrighty, if I back out, fine, perfect. Now I'm going to come down here to background. I'm going to duplicate this layer, call it hair. I am then going to move it to the top like that. I'm going to set the foreground color to a hair color. I suggest you do you might need to experiment with this. Um, some colors work better in half tone and some don't, so you're definitely going to want to experiment with your colors a little bit. And now I am going to um, go to make sure I've got uh, the hair color on top and then the, the background is set to white. I'm going to come over here to filter, sketch, half tone pattern. I'm going to make sure I've set this to 2 and this to 50 and say OK. Come over here and change this to multiply. OK. So now um, I want to um, create a new layer and call it lips. And I'm going to choose a lip color but first before I, I choose the lip color, um, I'm, I'm going to change this to multiply. And I'm actually going to turn off these layers. I'm going to hide these layers. I'm going to hide that layer. I'm going to hide this one, this one, and this one. And so I only have the top one selected and the background layer turned on. And I'm going to come over here and pick my lip color. I'm going to use my little painter tool, my little eyedrop tool, to actually select a lip color. Okay, so it's actually picking up some of the color of her, her real lips in the picture here. Say OK. I am going to now crop in really close and I'm going to paint in her lip color. Mm, that's a little bit dark, but we'll see how that looks. Following the contour of her lip, I am painting in the lip color. So I'm going to turn these layers on now and we're going to check that out. Okay. Okay. Could be a little bit lighter color. So I'm going to go to the lips. I'm going to go over here to image, adjustments, hue, saturation, and I'm actually going to lighten, lighten it up a little bit. Maybe saturate the color a little bit. I'm going to come over here to the hair layer and I'm going to add a layer mask to that. And I'm actually going to remove this half tone from her lips. I don't really like the way that looks. So I'm going to remove the half tone on her lips. Maybe go in a little bit closer. Um, on my skin tone, I'm just going to, I noticed that my skin tone is kind of bleeding into my lips a little bit, so I'm going to add, um, I'm going to come in here and just kind of remove that from my skin tone on my lips. 
I'm noticing that it was bleeding into it a little bit. So, all right, so there we go. We've got nice whites of the eyes, uh, nice lip tone. So um, now what I'm going to do is um, going to see if I need to add any more whites of the eyes here. So I'm going to call that whites of eyes, and I'm going to change that to overlay because it says to change it to overlay, and I'm going to um, crop in, and I'm going to see if I need to paint in any whites of the eyes in a couple areas here. It looks pretty good. Um, let's see here. Right about yeah, it looks fine. So now I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to call it eye color and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on an eye color that I like, kind of a green. Again, I'm going to turn this to multiply and I'm going to paint in my eye color. Okay. I'm going to change it to eye color and I have my blending mode set to multiply and that looks good. If I'm not happy with this I can go to image adjustments, hue saturation and I could always saturate or desaturate, change the color if I want, lighten it up, make it brighter, say okay. That looks pretty good. Okay so now I want to look at my image and see okay is there any place I want to remove the half tone and that would be on the hair layer here. So I'm going to go in with my paintbrush and I actually want to remove it from the background. Sometimes you might want to remove it, you know, from other places. It just depends on where the half tone happens to show up on your image. Um, Alrighty, so I'm just going to remove it from the background. You might want to get in kind of close just to double check that, you know, go around the edges and make sure it looks good. Alright, so I'm going to go back. And at this time I can also adjust this. If I go to image adjustments, hue, saturation, I could always adjust my half tone. You know, I can lighten it up a little bit if I want to. Uh, I could change the color of it. I'm going to say okay. So it looks fine. But it looks like I need to remove more of it from the top here. So make sure I'm in my layer mask and remove from the top here. Great. Okay. So now the next step is to come up top here to my eye color layer and I'm going to right above that I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to change that to multiply and I'm going to name that shirt and then I'm going to add a new layer I'm going to call that necklace again make sure it's set on multiply and then I'm going to add a new layer call that flowers and make sure that's set to multiply and then add a new layer and call that uh, background background like behind her that type of background change that to multiply so I've got background I've got flowers here I've got shirt 
and I've got necklace. Oh, one thing I notice is that on the background on the hair thing, I need to remove this area. So click back on that, and I need to move the remove the um, the half tone from here because this is also part of the background. All right, there we go. All right, so now. I'm going to go back over here to shirt and I'm going to choose a color I want to paint her shirt. So I'm going to do a real bright yellow and I'm going to crop in a little bit closer so I can see what I'm doing. Go ahead and paint in the shirt. Now you want to be really careful along the edges. Okay. Um, you know, paint around these edges. Be really neat about your painting. See, I got I blood a little bit in here into the necklace area, so I'm going to add a layer mask on this, and I'm going to remove any any yellow that I don't want contaminating the beads. All righty, and. <coughs> Okay, I'm going to come over here now. Um, I've got the shirt here. Carefully paint all this in, making sure I come right to the edge and not over the edge. This brings us back to when we used to color when we were in elementary school. Oh, how we always were trying to carefully color in the lines. Oh, I can't tell you how many times. Um, I was kind of a perfectionist for sure as a kid and I was always trying to color everything perfectly. Um, oops, I got into the necklace so I better use my layer mask to kind of remove that. I could go back and click in my... Alrighty. All right, now I'm going to come over here to necklace and I'm going to choose um, maybe like a, a blue color. That would be kind of pretty. Now, you want to be real careful here. Make sure you get right to the edge, not beyond. Like if I go blue into the yellow, it's going to make it green. We don't want that, right? So we want to make sure that we don't accidentally paint the blue into the yellow. Okay, so we're going to back out now, and now we're going to come over here to flowers. <coughs> and I'm going to do my flowers in like various shades of, of pink. I'm going to start right here with some pink flowers. And then I'm going to do a darker color right here. And a lighter color right here. And maybe change the shade of it a little bit. And the actual tone of the flower. So it's darker now, but it's also 
it's a different uh, has a, some different colors in there I keep changing up the colors because it's the more colors I use the more interesting it's going to be in my flowers it could even kind of overlap it a little bit here and a little bit lighter there I like the darker maybe flower over here. Now I'm going to come over here to background. I'm actually going to do kind of like a, a bright orange. I think a bright orange would be kind of interesting. I put the layer mask on the background so that I could just kind of clean it up a little bit. So now I'm going to go to File, Save As, and um, you're going to name it your initial last name, underscore, pop art. You're going to save it in your P drive under your name. There's the P drive under your name in the pop image folder and you're going to save it right there say OK you want to make sure you save this as a PSD file and then you're going to critique your project and turn it in and that is it